Hi there. I'm Michael Odie. I'm a SolarWinds contributor and president of Tekka Inc. And in this presentation, we're going to talk about managing SQL Server with PowerShell. Uh, this is part one of a two-part presentation. So what we're going to cover in part one, first we're going to look at importing the SQL Server PowerShell module. Uh, this module is called SQL PS and we'll kind of see what it does. It allows you to uh, navigate through a SQL Server using PowerShell commands. Next we'll look at running SQL or PowerShell from SQL Server Management Studio. It has options where you can launch a PowerShell directly from Management Studio. Then we'll look at using some navigation using the SQL Server PowerShell provider. Uh, you can basically use this provider to navigate through, Power, through SQL Server exactly like you might a uh, file system. So it's quite interesting. It even allows you to drill down into the file and table level, and you'll see that. Next, we'll see some examples of using the SQL Server PowerShell commandlets. There's a number of different commandlets available to help you manage SQL Server. So first, before you begin managing SQL Server with a PowerShell console, you need to import the SQL PS uh, module. And this command shows you how to do this. Uh, you basically use the import module command. This is a standard uh, PowerShell command. Give it the name of the module, and that's SQL PS. And then you use the disable name checking parameter to go along with that. That will prevent any errors from being displayed as you use this module. And these errors basically just come about because of uh, minor naming incompatibilities between uh, SQL Server and PowerShell. So using that will just prevent those errors from being displayed. So it's just a, basically a nicety. There, there is no real incompatibility there. If you try to use um, the different SQL Server commands, like here you were using uh, maybe a directory command to navigate into SQL Server with PowerShell, and we haven't loaded that PowerShell module, you'll get an error a lot like this that says object not found. But after you go ahead and import the module using the import module command, then you execute that same command, in this case uh, doing a directory or navigating into the default SQL Server instance, uh, you'll see that uh, everything works fine. You can also launch this um, uh, PowerShell command shell from uh, SQL Server Management Studio itself. Uh, to do that, just open up Object Explorer, uh, right-click your SQL Server instance, and from the context menu, go down here and select the Start PowerShell command. This will launch uh, a PowerShell window. If you launch this uh, window from uh, SQL Server, you do not have to run the Import Module command because it's done implicitly for you. Once you've done this, you can go ahead and navigate that SQL Server instance. For example, in this screen, you can see uh, we've launched the SQL Server PowerShell module, then we can instantly run the dir command, which is a PowerShell command, and we can see the different directories that are out there. We can use the cd command, like change directory into the databases. You can see here we're using PowerShell and that PowerShell provider for SQL Server to navigate through uh, the different uh, directories that are out there for SQL Server. When you go to navigate using the PowerShell provider, there's, a, there's several things you can navigate. The one that you're going to work with most would be your database object, which you can find in the SQL Server uh, colon slash SQL directory. But there are a lot of other objects out there that you can manage as well. There's policy-based management objects. There's registered server objects you can navigate through. Utility objects. You can navigate through data tier application objects, data collection objects, and even integration services and analysis services. So the PowerShell provider lets you go through and navigate through a lot of different objects out there in SQL Server. And I'll show you an example of using that in just a second. PowerShell also provides the number of commandlets that you can use to help manage them. You have commandlets that can create availability groups as well as add nodes to them. You have commandlets that can perform backups and restores. You can also execute commands and queries using these commandlets. In this example, you can see I'm using the invoke SQL command commandlet with the query parameter passing a simple query to SQL Server. We'll give you a demonstration of all that in just a second. So let's have a quick look at getting started with uh, managing SQL Server and PowerShell. First, let's open up a PowerShell prompt. Now, we haven't loaded the SQL PS module in here yet, so let's try a, a simple PowerShell command here. This is one of the navigation commands, and we're going to do a directory of SQL Server, and we'll look in the default instance. So as we hit that command, since the module isn't loaded, well, we've got an error. So in order to load that SQL PS module, we're going to use the import module command, like you see here. Give it the module name, which is SQL PS, and disable name checking. 
and at this point it's going to go ahead and load in that SQL PS module for us. This takes just a second and there you have it. The, the module is loaded in. Now let's rerun that command that we ran earlier and at this point you can see we're now able to navigate the Earth SQL Server instance using PowerShell. You can also start PowerShell uh, from the SQL Server Management Studio as well. So let's pop over here and get a look at doing that. So in this case, we can go in, we can say start PowerShell. And when we do that, you'll notice the prompt is just a little bit different. It's black instead of the normal default PowerShell blue. But once we do this, this automatically loads in the SQL PS module for us, as you can see here. And we can perform our navigation commands. And you can see we can navigate much like going into the file system. So if we wanted to go into the databases of the SQL Server instance, we could type in CD databases, DIR, and we can see the databases that are there. CD, let's go into AdventureWorks 2012. And there we've navigated to there. Let's take a look in there as we continue to dig in a little deeper. And let's go into the tables. And do a directory of those. And you can see that we can basically drill down into whatever we want to look at here. So now, let's have a quick look at running um, a couple of other commands here. Some of the SQL Server commandlets that we have available to us. So let's pop over here. And we're going to go ahead and run a couple of these commandlets. First, we're going to start off with the invoke SQL command. So you can see we've run a, a simple invoke SQL command, running a simple query, selecting our version number. So that was simple enough. We can run other commands too using invoke SQL command. For instance, uh, we can invoke functions and return the results, like here, getting the results of select date. We can also run queries that uh, select the, the data from different tables. So Let's go ahead and have a look at doing that. Here we're using invoke SQL command, passing it in the database we're going to be using, AdventureWorks, and then using the query parameter to give it a query where we're selecting a couple columns from the Human Resources Employees table. And there you see. And that's uh, the basics of using PowerShell and SQL Server. In part two, we'll dig into this in a little more detail. And now you've seen how to get started using a PowerShell to manage SQL Server. In part two, we're going to dive into this deeper and we'll show you some actual uh, examples of running various useful commands to manage uh, SQL Server. Thanks for watching.